The following podcast is by Mr. Jim Taylor, elder law and special needs attorney, helping and protecting those who need long-term care. And welcome back everyone to Answers for Elders Radio Network as we are here with Jim Kaler talking about VA, Veterans Administration, Veterans Affairs, compensation. And um, this is something that's really I'm learning all about right now. And for those of you that are listening to the radio um, or, you know, maybe by by podcast on any sort of the podcast channels, um, make sure you check us out on YouTube because there is a corresponding um, PowerPoint presentation that Jim is showing us right now as we he is talking and it really helps to lay things out and certainly we can certainly follow along very easily just by listening but I invite you to go to Answers for Elders on YouTube and uh, type in Jim Kaler K-O-E-W-L-E-R and just you like will it be sounds. able to find it what's that it's spelled just like it sounds yeah right <laughs> <laughs> So Jim, welcome back. And um, we're talking about compensation. Yes, we are. So uh, we were in the middle of a slide uh, where we talked about, we've already mentioned in the prior session, service connected and a rating on how disabled is the veteran. Mm -hmm. But I uh, need to point out, as we've mentioned this a couple of times, I want to make sure to hit this last point. For VA compensation, there is no requirement that the veteran serve during a time of war. This is different than the VA pension program. Yes. What most people call aid in attendance. Okay. But the VA pension program had to be during a time, designated time of war for VA compensation. There is no such requirement. Okay. So that is a biggie. Uh, yes. So there are some people who are eligible <clears throat> for both VA compensation and VA pension. And there's some people who are <coughs> eligible for Excuse compensation me. only, mm -hmm. even though they you know they have a disability and they now have health care costs higher than um, their income which is a pension test but they didn't serve during a time of war so pension is not available to them so they can but they can't get compensation so now i mentioned uh, in the, the end of the last session that compensation rating go go ratings <clears throat> go from zero to a hundred but in, by tens, so basically goes zero, zero to 10 by one, right. we look at it that way. Okay. So there's 10 categories. There's, there's, there's 11 levels of disability. Oh, 11 you, levels. Zero okay. percent, you're not disabled, but you have- Oh, got it, okay, got you, it. You have something connected to your time in the service that is some injury or illness, but it hasn't yet made you disabled. Got it. But you've got the service, you've got the injury or illness, and it has been shown to be connected to your time in the service. That's zero percent, okay. Um, and the money that goes with these different percentages definitely connects to the percentage of disability, okay. Years ago, and I off the top of my head, I don't remember how many years ago, but before I started practicing, which would mean at least sixteen, um, practicing this form of law, um, your disability income depended on your rank when you got out of the military rather than how disabled you were so sometime in the past that got changed and now it is how disabled are you just as a point of of reference the highest uh disability rating 100 percent for a single veteran yields for 2022 $3,332.06 a month, 33.32.06 per month at 100% disability for a single veteran. Wow. For, a for a married veteran, it's 3517.84, $3,517.84 per month. 90% is not 10% off of that. 80% is not 20% off of that. It, it follows this weird... For those who know math, I think of the curve almost like a logarithm. Starts out a little slow, big steep climb, and then you get near the top and it kind of flattens out. Uh, it definitely increases from 90 to 100, increases from 80 to 90, but it's not as big an increase as, say, from 40 to 50, right in the middle of this range. It's kind of weird, um, but I mean, the numbers are what they are, and the rating is what it is. The rating can be appealed. Whoop, I didn't mean to move that slide. The rating can be appealed, uh, but the 
the money that goes to the rating cannot be appealed. It simply gets adjusted mm -hmm. every December 1 with a cost of living adjustment. Mm -hmm. Don't know why VA does December 1. Good for them. It's not during the holidays. And they're always like a, a right around, but sometimes higher than the Social Security cost of living, like a tenth of a percent higher. Okay. Um, so VA compensation rates go up faster than the cost of living adjustments with Social Security. VA pension rates too, by the way. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then the special monthly compensation that goes on top of pension for, I'm um, sorry, on top of compensation. So special monthly compensation on top of regular compensation. I wish they hadn't used compensation twice, but they did. Okay. So this is the potential of aid and attendance or housebound. So you may not be right. able to get, uh, you may not be able to get out and have activities of daily living, but maybe you can't get out that while that is a pension animal, it occasionally rears its head with compensation because the, the caseworkers at the VA who do pension also do compensation. I think they sometimes get their own concepts mixed up. Mm -hmm. And if it yields more money, shut up and take it. <laughs> okay. It. Um, but that special monthly compensation rate varies. And all of this depends on, and I'm motioning at the slides, I didn't help people with to not see what I'm looking at, um, but how much money and how much special monthly compensation comes really depends on the disability rating. So that zero to 100 thing. Okay? I can really see the need for uh, an elder law attorney that knows how to position this um, to rally on and advocate on behalf of someone yeah. because they don't necessarily know how to answer these questions. Um, you know, in the most effective yeah. way. Right. And the thing is, you won't find many elder law attorneys doing this kind of work because they can't get paid for it. No uh, one is allowed to ask for money to help with a VA application. Interesting. But they can charge uh, on an appeal. So if mm. someone, so that's why in Ohio and other states that have this model where our veteran service com, uh, commission is very important because the, the, the employees of the veteran service commission, and I think all of them that are veteran service officers happen, at least in Ohio, also are veterans. So they make a point of hiring veterans there. Okay. But all of them are paid by the county. They're on salary. Mm -hmm. So while they get paid making air quotes, to do these applications, they aren't paid on an application by application basis. It's simply mm -hmm. their vocation. Sure. And they may do an application for compensation for somebody. And then the next afternoon, they're doing a pension application. And then the next afternoon, they're finding some county money to build some veteran a ramp on his or her front porch so they can get in out with a wheelchair or widen right. doors or things like that. Okay. So they do all sorts of things for veterans and families. But help with, help with applications for VA uh, benefits is very important. The next one might be VA benefits for a flag for the casket at the veteran's funeral mm -hmm. or 300 bucks or whatever. I think that's the number, but pretty close to that for a veteran's burial plot. Okay. So they do the Veteran Service Commission in Ohio and whatever other states have that same sort of service. They do all sorts of veterans benefits, not just these that are money related to health issues. Okay, so uh, it is a great service, and uh, but they're uh, but if they if it gets screwed up like that one I mentioned, it was actually a veteran service commission that mentioned that old um, trust that that could benefit. The, the applicant, but was tied up in a way, it was like a special needs trust all, almost. You can't get at it without the trustee saying so. But it was still counted because the Veterans Service Commission mentioned it. Yeah. Big mistake. That, after a notice of disagreement, an appeal can be taken, and the person helping with an appeal, assuming they're accredited, can get a piece of the action, usually about 20%, but anything higher than 20% can be possible, but you have to make a special petition for the extra on top of the 20 I do 20 when I do these. I don't do them very often, uh, but uh, I just do the standard 20. So uh, for surviving spouses, the comp maximum compensation rate is 1437.66 a month for the surviving spouse, but this would be under dependent and a donated compensation. Plus another 305.28 a month if the veteran was totally disabled, service-connected for eight years, 
So this is after the veteran's death. You can't get both DIC and uh, for the, the family and regular compensation for the, the, uh, uh, for the veteran. Because mm -hmm. for a de dependent indemnity <laughs> compensation, the veteran has to have passed away. Um, okay. If there are minor children, another three and six a month for two years after the veteran's death, plus 356, 16 a month for each minor child. Uh, and then another 356, 16 a month if the spouse qualifies for aid in attendance. And then this is health activities of daily living. Or 166.85 a month if the spouse is housebound. Remember, this is another special monthly compensation. I mentioned it before. You mm -hmm. don't see it very often, but sometimes it sneaks through. And these are all just like just like the compensation rates are due to change on December 1. Mm -hmm. By the way, we usually don't hear on December 1. We usually hear by December 7 and then backdate. They, but knowing before December 1, it happens occasionally, but, but not usually. We usually have to wait a day or two or up to a week. So that is all I wish to cover with the VA compensation right now. Um, I hope and that we're we going to go talk. into long-term care right after this. Is that we're going correct? VA long-term care services. Well, you know, this is very interesting. Uh, just a real quick question on compensation. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned something about the fact that, um, you know, the Veterans Affairs office it's it's like do elder law attorneys how do you find an elder law attorney that can help qualify okay. the the va has an online list of accredited agents perfect means they're not attorneys and accredited right. attorneys perfect um so just google that va mm -hmm. accreditation you should be able to find the list it'll be perfect. buried somewhere on some page under the va office of general counsel Got it. Because these are all monitored by the general counsel's mm -hmm. office, meaning the head lawyer for the VA. Got um, it. But you can find the list online. Perfect. And everyone, we're going to talk about long-term care right after that. Jim and I will be back. State of Ohio residents, you have a friend to help you navigate long-term care while protecting your assets. You can reach Jim at www.protectingseniors.com or just email him at J-K-O-E-W-L-E-R hyphen A-F-E. That's J-K-O-E-W-L-E-R hyphen A-F-E at protectingseniors.com.